Hello friends, you are watching my YouTube channel Not Ready Keep It. In fact, I plan to do a different video today. Then I thought it would be a good idea to start from where I stopped in last video. Those who have seen my last video might guess what today's topic is. Yes, this video is about how content streaming works in an OTT platform. Then let us see the end to end OTT ecosystem first. We divide the entire OTT ecosystem into three content delivery, content management, and OTT clients. First, we check where the content delivery starts. It starts at DTP backend. In DTP backend unit, we get the linear word contents. Then the transcoding form will convert the received input into audio video chunks. Okay, let me explain it a little more. Let us first see what transcoder input is. It can be any of these protocols, RTSP, RTMB or MPEG streams. Then it re-encodes the audio and video. Finally, it will generate different video audio profiles based on the output protocol chosen. Mostly word and linear program would have two independent transcoding farms. However, the two transcoding farm will follow the same process. Perhaps there might be differences in the input protocol, output protocol and bitrate resolutions used. I think I have discussed all the details of transcoder here. Let's do a recap. Transcoder can receive different type of content stream. Then it re-encode audio and video. And finally, it output different sized chunks of same video content. We call these audio video chunks ABR chunks. Vastly used ABR protocols are MBAC-TASH, HLS and HSS. ABR stands for Adaptive Bitrate Streaming. ABR protocol helps the OTT player to switch to different available video profiles based on the customer network condition. Let me go into a little more details of ABR. Here you can see a sample representation of video file. The horizontal axis shows the video duration and the vertical axis represents the video quality. In this picture, you can see same video in three different heights. The height of the file is the video bitrate, which is expressed in bit per second, which can be viewed as the quality of the video. High bitrate content means better video quality. A minor drawback of ABR protocol is the sudden quality switch in the playing video. So far so good. Perhaps you have a question. How does the player know what quality levels and the segment exist? This happens through a manifest file. We'll explain this part sometime later. In the end-to-end -end picture, I also showed a picture of a load balancer. Did you notice that? This is nothing else. This component will balance the processing load between transcoders in transcoding farm. Now the second phase in this process, pass this ABR chunks to packager for encryption. The packager is configured to consume the output of the transcoder. In packager, the first step is content ID generation. Each service has its own content ID. This content ID is created based on their business requirement. The next step is the content registration. Once the content ID is generated, this will be passed to the license server to map against a license policy group ID. In turn, Packager receives the encryption key to encrypt the ABR chunks. Then finally, it will be moved to the origin server for streaming. Origin server can be Packager itself or CDN origin based on the configuration set for. License Packager encrypt each ABR chunks and create a manifest file. This feature shows the contents in a manifest file. The first part is the video chunk duration. Next is adaptation set for each of the video audio chunks. Each adaptation set represents the different bitrate supported by your OTT platform. Finally, each representation has the properties of that particular segment. These encrypted ABR chunks can be distributed in two ways. It can be through push method or through pull method. In push method, CDN origin will be used to push the content. This means that for number of services, the content is stored in the CDN origin which is uploaded via HTTP. Here the benefit is that the network capacity of the CDN origin on output side is used. It has a downside also. The downside is that the CDN origin network capacity limit can be reached at some point. Now the other method that is pull method. The packager will be used as the origin to the CDN edge for the number of services in the case of pull method. The benefit is that this way, the CDN origin in network is not loaded additionally. The downside is that the packager will use its limited output capacity. 
the operator will configure these two methods based on the business need. Now we discuss about content management. Content management service maintains schedules and program information for the content made available to the OTT clients. As a simple example, program schedule for the live channel can be maintained by the content management server. It keeps the manifest file to download each segment of the content. Next is user interface. Application user interface is device specific as it needs to use device specific framework to render the UI. So typically there are different UI versions for various device types like iOS, Android, PC and setup box. Now the common trend is to use the platform independent technologies like JavaScript, HTML5 to develop UIs for OTT clients but it is still not in that mature stage. Next is user authorization. These components are responsible for presenting access to only authorized content to the user as per the subscription. Next item is EPG. EPG are menu based system that provide OTT clients with a continuously updated menus that displays the scheduling information for current and upcoming programs. Some guides also feature backward scrolling to promote their catch up content. They are commonly known as TV guides. Next item is player interface. Player provides interface to application to set various configuration parameters and also indicate key state changes to application. One example of key state change notification is the video playback state. Video playback state can be any of this stop playing post error. Next item is OTT player. OTT player is the core engine responsible for downloading, decrypting and decoding the video content. And the next item, schedule handler. Schedule handler is responsible for maintaining and triggering the right video clip to play as per channel. Also it instantiates metadata handler and content downloader to start getting relevant metadata and video streams from the server. Metadata handler. Metadata handler is responsible for getting the relevant channel program metadata and stream metadata from server. In case of live stream, this metadata needs to be refreshed periodically as the stream is dynamically being encoded. Channel metadata typically has these informations. Channel time schedule, type of the content. Type of the content means it can be T word, live or free content, S word. Advertise information such as ad provider, ad break details. And finally the restrictions which includes geo restriction and device restrictions. Next one is network measurement. This module measures and provides network related information to content downloader. Content downloader relies on this information to make use of the best algorithm and download the best possible profiles in that network condition. Next is content downloader. The most critical part of the player determines video playback quality and hence the user experience. Its goal is to download the best possible bitrate video without stalling. If algorithms are too optimistic, there is a chance that video would stall because of lack of content to play in the given time. If the algorithms are too pessimistic, a low bitrate video shall be played, hence spoiling the user experience. Fine tuning the content downloader is the most challenging part in the player. Okay, now see the content decryptor. It is responsible for decrypting the downloaded video content and passing it to the device abstraction layer for rendering. Next is device abstraction layer. This will be different for different platforms. It is responsible for actual rendering of video as per specific platform. Some platforms like iOS and Samsung may play MBUG streams as it is, while some other platforms like Android PC may need audio and video frames separated before being rendered. Device abstraction layer is responsible for converting downloaded video to a format that is suitable for rendering on a target device. Finally see what happened when you open an OTT app in your platform. First it make a request to the content management server through API gateway and get all the required details to populate home page. Whenever the user click on the asset to play, 
it will contact to the content management server again to get the manifest file of that asset. Once it received the requested manifest file, it will contact to the CDN to download the same manifest file. CDN will check the requested file is present in cache. If yes, CDN saves it from cache. Otherwise, CDN contact with origin server and return the manifest file to the requested device. Also, CDN will cache this manifest file for the next user. After received the manifest file, the OTT client device contact to the license server to get the license info. Then finally, client download the audio video chunks mentioned in the manifest in the same order and use the encryption keys received from the license server to decrypt the content. Rest of the rendering part will be taken care by the platform abstraction layer. I think this video was useful and thank you all for watching my channel.